What's going on guys, it's Cliffy here taking on Zimbabwe in the first of three one day internationals. Now we batted first, got an all right score, I can't remember quite what it was, um, 174 plus 90, so we're looking about 264, which in a one day international, not too bad of a score. Now what is Brendan Taylor trying to do here, he's just trying to hoik it to all parts of the ground. Um, but yeah, didn't bat, well, batted all right, started off all right, and then got a wee bit bored. Um, pretty constricted for time at the moment, so um, batting is, I guess, not really the priority on this career mode anymore. That is in my batting career mode. Make sure, if you haven't checked that out already, hit the channel down below and go and check that out. It is pretty cool, and I'm really enjoying going doing that, starting off with New Zealand domestic teams, which I am going to show you guys how to do uh Early next week, probably on Tuesday, because I've had a lot of people saying about it, a lot of people requesting uh, to tell them how to do it. So I thought I'd go make a video. It would be easy to go and do it that way than try and type out an explanation. So looking forward to doing that. Um, so that is obviously coming your guys' way next week, early next week sometime. Um, also over the weekend, we're going to have that first game of our uh, South End United career mode tomorrow. Sunday, probably going to be a pack opening. Monday, I'd say, will be a bit of cricket coach. And then, as I said, Tuesday, we're probably going to be looking at doing the uh, how to get the domestic teams. Now, this doesn't have to just be for New Zealand domestic teams. It can be for any domestic competition around the world. So, I mean, you could have the West Indian, you could have the Sri Lankan, you could have the... Uh, South African, I mean you can have the works um, so it really is cool that you can go and do that customization and I guess that's one thing that I really do like about games like this is the customization um, especially games that don't have licenses for players and teams where you can go and download them from, uh, like, I guess it's called fan made content um, which is quite cool and I don't have a very good field here but I'm going to continue bowling anyway and he just blocks it out so at the end of the day not too bad of a loss there. I'm actually bowling with an off spinner's field. What is going on? So we'll chuck it back to our original field. I don't know if it's just when the patches come out, but I think in internationals there are less field choices you can choose from now. I've, I'm guessing that's taking into account the new uh, international rules where I think you can only have four players outside the ring now. Um, but I mean, hey, I could be wrong about that, but I'm not wrong about picking up a wicket because we pick up Hamilton Mitsukitsa um, and Zimbabwe now 3 4 79, which is ideal. It was a bit of a bummer that that there wasn't a in swinger because that is a skill that I'm really trying to get up. I really, um, well, it's more against the left handers that I'm trying to get it up because it's the away swing um, and you can quite often get the catches in the slips. So really need to go back and play with domestic cricket to go and try and, I guess, pick up my batting because that is the one side, I guess, of this career mode. Now it's not so much of an issue because I have the batting career mode where I can go and do all that. Um, but being a bowling all-rounder, and if you have a look at my batting averages, not flash. Um, and... You know, when you're batting all round and you're batting at seven, you are expected to contribute with the bat. I mean, you're not going out there to score hundreds every game, people, but you are expected to go out there and at least provide a bit of support with the bat. You know, I mean, I've been struggling to get into double figures, and at the end of the day, that for a bowling all rounder really is not good enough. A bowling all rounder really should be getting into double figures in most games. They should be going, coming in at number seven, number eight, and they should be batting um, with that top order, middle order player that is still in and supporting them. I guess that's more um, of their role. That's the role I guess I play, um, well, played in my outdoor team. Coming in seven, eight, just trying to go and. You know, support the player down the other end. Go and hang in for them. Um, and that's that's really what I started to do because we always used to, a couple of seasons ago, we always used to have collapses and we come in and we usually, usually have a player in the middle order who's real solid. And I guess that's the same for most teams. Like you have a player um, who's in there, I guess on the day, it doesn't have to be the same player all the time, but you've got a player there who's batting real well and you come in and he's losing partners all, all round him, left, right and centre. And what you want to do is you want to go and you want to keep him there. You want to keep him batting, keep him going. Because, I mean, at the end of the day, you want to go and score runs. And you want your partner to go and score runs. Because it's not an individual game. It is a team game. So that is what you want to do. That's my philosophy on it anyway. I know there are some batting all, uh, sorry, some bowling all-rounders um, who come out and probably just try and have a slog. I mean, it, dep it all depends on the situation that you're coming into bat. And at the end of the day, it just depends on the situation. I mean, 
if the situation isn't right for you to come in and have a slog, I mean, if you're coming in, you've lost heaps of early wickets and there's still 20 overs left, having a slog, not the best of ideas. I mean, there's plenty you can still do. You can rebuild the innings if you're chasing. You've still got plenty of time. You've still got 25 overs. Um, and I mean, if you've got, you're playing on a good pitch and you've got a, a batsman, a senior batsman or something down the other end, then you can go and rebuild with them. If you're setting a total, I mean, 25 overs is a long time. You can go and up your run rate very, very quickly. That seems to be a pretty constant case for us. As we pick up a court and bold, I wasn't even expecting that. But I'll take it nonetheless. Um, hmm, that's all right. Just looking at my computer, there's some strange stuff going on there. My computer is actually, I think it's getting towards the end of its life. Like, it's just, I'm I'm not even sure. It's... It just does some weird things quite a lot of the time, and I, I don't even know what it's doing, so I just I just leave it. I mean, it still works, it still records, I can still do all my stuff on there, but I mean, it just it feels like it's getting towards the end of its life. So that is a wicket maiden, great bowling there from Captain Cliff. He picks up another one in Zimbabwe, four down now uh, for 107, still needing 157 for the win. So we're going, we're hanging in there. We are getting there, 155. So we've got some tight overs that are being bowled up. That run rate is going to continue to go up. It's up over 7 already. So, I mean, if we can continue to go and build a bit of pressure. I swear it wasn't this dark last over either. It looks like there's been a big cloud that's gone over the ground or maybe we're starting to get into night. But that's got to be close. I think that is just missing off stump. I'm going to give it a review though because I feel quietly confident that that may be going on just to hit. No, the umpire says no. We're not even going to have a look at the DRS because nobody's got time for that. But I thought that was quite a wee bit closer um, than I thought it was. Actually, when I was umpiring the other week, um, it was quite strange. There were quite a few times where the ball went, hit the batsman's pad, and it looked like it was pretty good, but there were no appeals from the bowling team. And there was actually one time where it went and it hit the guy probably halfway up the pad. And it was probably going on to hit leg. Um, it went to go and, I guess, swivel and play a bit of bit of a pull shot. Uh, but just mistimed it. The ball didn't come on at all. Didn't bounce. Um, and went, went hit pretty well up the pad. They were going to go and uh, take a run. But at the end of the day, didn't. Um, and then when he came down the other end, I spoke to the batsman. I said, you got a bit of bat on that first one, didn't you? And he said, no. And I thought, oh, that's strange. I said, that was probably going on to cannon into middle and leg. And they didn't appeal, which was quite strange. But I guess that, that all just depends on the people. I've just gone and rubbed my arm and just... I've got a massive lump. What is that? That's not good. Keep an eye on that. We can't have old Cliffy getting sick. That would not be ideal. Uh, but speaking... I mean, this doesn't have anything to do with being sick. I don't know why I said speaking of being sick. But uh, next weekend, I'm obviously not going to be here. I have mentioned it a few times in the past. But actually heading up to Auckland for the weekend. So I'm away on Friday, back on Monday. So I may potentially go and try and uh, pre-record a few videos. But if there aren't any videos, that is the reason why. Because I am not here. Heading up to see the Breakers, which is going to be pretty cool. Um... Haven't actually been to a Breakers game, so um, really looking forward to that. That's a pretty crap ball. I don't know what I was doing there. I don't know what happened with the release. Um, but yeah, looking, looking forward to that. So I think we uh, if we fly out about Friday. Oh, uh, no, change the field, change the field, change the field. Um, Friday at about 3 o'clock. Um, for those who don't know, the flight to Auckland isn't that long. It takes only just over an hour, so getting up there about 4. We're going to head in get settled in, then head on to the arena, go and watch the game, which me and my mate are both really looking forward to, um, and then we're going to head out, probably check out Sky City, because I, I've, the only time I've been to Auckland is when I've been uh, using it, I guess, as uh, like a domestic flight to transfer to an international flight, like a, an international flight that doesn't fly out of Christchurch. Uh, for example, I think, I think when you go to... Rarotonga, I, th I can't remember, I mean, this is bad, because I was, I was there like 11 months ago, um, I was there at the start of this year, and I can't even remember, but I definitely remember uh, some, there are some flights, some international destinations that you actually can't get to from Christchurch Airport, um, you have to go and take that domestic flight, so really, I've, I've only really been, it must, no, it must, I'm pretty sure you can fly direct from Rarotonga from Christchurch. I'm pretty sure you can. I think it must be Singapore that you have to go from Auckland. 
but I'm not too sure. But yeah, anyway, um, that is really the only time that I have been on, uh, well, in Auckland. So I haven't really seen, well, I haven't seen any of it, uh, to be honest. All I've taken is just the bus from the domestic to the international terminal. That's, that's it. No, they must, they must fly. I'm sure when we went to Rarotonga, I'm sure we took a domestic flight to Auckland. This is going to bug me now because I'm, I'm not sure about it. But I'm, I am 99% sure that we did take a domestic flight. I could be wrong, but I just have a feeling now that we met people, met people in Auckland, um, in in the airport. I'm positive of it. I'm absolutely positive. But we've gone off on a completely different tangent here. I mean, we were talking about recordings, um, and then we we're talking about being sick, and then we we're talking about so.